Sandown Racecourse in Surrey. They're expecting 15,000 people here today and half a million pounds to be exchanged in cash. I'm here because I've developed a guaranteed system for winning at the horses. This system allows me to predict 24 hours in advance, quite openly, which horse will win in big high profile races. Now to prove this, six weeks ago I took a woman, a random member of the public, and I told her which horse was going to win in a certain race. It did win, she was intrigued, I then did it again and again and again, she started to bet larger and larger amounts of money. Now today, that woman has scraped together every last penny that she can find and she is risking it all on one final race. Is it really possible to accurately predict the winner of a horse race again and again and again? I'm going to tell you exactly how that's done. Welcome to the system. He heads down towards the second last with Jamie Moore. He leads by six or seven lengths. Horse racing, often nicknamed the sport of kings, can be traced back to the 12th century after the English knights returned from the Crusades with Arab horses. They were bred with English horses to produce the thoroughbred that is the breed used in horse racing in the UK today. Since the chariot races of Roman times to the multi-million pound global business today, horse racing has been a popular sport in many countries throughout history and is often inextricably associated with gambling. Two to build and four bar. Two to build and favourite and four bar. Winner each way. Two to one, that's two to one. The tic-tac is two to one, he's on the nose, he's two to one. A bookmaker is a person who takes bets off of punters, punters back horses, and the bookmaker pays you out if you win. If it's ten to one, if you put a pound on, you get ten pound back. So somebody there just had ten pound on Pasco at seven or two. Well, seven or two is three and a half to one. So for their ten pound, they'll win thirty-five pound plus their ten estate. They'll get forty-five pound return. But as you can see, we've got horses on the board here at two hundred to one, number fourteen. Now that's got practically no chance of winning. It's like me swimming the channel with a double bed on me back. It's got no possible chance. You know, but they've all got four legs. You know that they've all got four legs on the tail, so anything can happen. It's just instinct, really. You just see a horse, you think, oh, that looks good. I'll maybe put my five pounds on that one. I was rather obsessed with gambling as a teenager and in particular the idea of winning systems and it was around that time that this system was born, a guaranteed way of having somebody win at the horses again and again and again. So I needed somebody who would benefit from my system, so I took a random member of the public after making sure that she didn't have a history of gambling and I sent her an email without mentioning my name predicting the winner of the next day's horse race. My name's Kadisha. I live in Kew. I work two jobs. I have a son. My personal situation is I'm a single mum. I pay all bills by myself with the two jobs that I have. I never have a large sum of money because it always goes out because of responsibilities that I've got in life. I was sat at my desk when I got my first tip. I received an email first. I thought it was a bit crazy, a bit mad, but I thought, hey, I'm up for a laugh, so bring it on. I didn't tell Kadisha that it was me sending her the predictions because I didn't want that knowledge affecting her. But instead, I set about sending her a number of anonymous tips uh, sent over several weeks so that she would gain the confidence in the system that I wanted her to have. I got it by email first, then I got confirmation again by a text. And it gave me details of the horse, time it was running and where it was running, and it said that I wasn't able to bet, I could just, I just have to watch the race. We emailed Kadisha and offered her the chance to take part in a TV documentary about an anonymous tipster who claimed to have a perfect system for the horses. Along with the email, I also sent her my first prediction and told her not to place a bet, but just to make sure she watched the race. I told her that the 9.20 at Wolverhampton the next day would be won by a horse called Boz. They're off. 
and Bosworth swiftly into its stride in the blue jacket to the inside. On the day of the race, I hoped she'd be watching at home to see if the prediction would come true. She was, and she saw the race was won by Boz, as I predicted. Boz holds on. I had got her attention. I was gutted that I couldn't put a bit on, but hey, I watched it and it won. Now that Kadisha was getting more intrigued, I asked her to keep a video diary of her experience from this point onwards and to keep the camera with her as a tip could come at any time. Placing my second bet now with the system, very confident. Race two, when I was able to put a bet down, I was given just the name of the horse and the time. Again, I was at work, received it by text, again confirmed by email and I literally left my desk. It wasn't even like I need to go out. I just zoomed out to the first betting shop, <laughs> recorded myself, placed an affair. It was exciting, actually. My next prediction for Kadisha, again 24 hours in advance of the race, was for the 6.37 at Suffolk Downs in Boston in America and for a horse called Laced Up to win. When I was in Boston, I was like, oh, how can you know he's going to win in Boston? After that comes Laced Up. Local the system guarantees a winner, but despite how impossible that sounds, Kadisha was prepared to put up some of her own money. Laced up's coming up the rails. Amazingly, impossibly, as the system predicted, Laced Up won, despite not being the favourite. Laced Up gets up on the inside. And Kadisha picked up her first winning. The second race I won about 28 quid. Race three was at Carlisle and my prediction was for Norton Brook to win even though it was an 18 to 1 outsider and therefore the horse that was least likely to win the race. And me again, <laughs> still here. Well as you can see I'm in the bookies now. Carlisle race I've been told so I'm now gonna write out my slip. Fingers crossed. Norton Brook, 18 to 1, 20 pounds to win, it better win, okay? Very anxious, <laughs> nervous, you know, very excited because the last two races won. Oh, good God, this better win. Oh my God, and they're off. I've been confident in the system so far, so I'm going to remain confident. Holding this paper Just very tightly. Three left to jump, and Norton Brook keeps galloping on. Norton Brook leads. Oh my God! And they come inside a final furlong. Norton Brook's been out in front for a long time. Two miles west is gaining with every stride. Norton oh my Brooke God! The horse is catching up. Oh my God! Side. The horse is catching up. Together, Norton Brook two miles west. It goes to the judge. Norton Brook has won. Thank you, the system. Oh my gosh, show me the money. Oh my gosh, show me the money. Ah! Can you believe that? On camera! This is Kadisha's third win in a row. She's just won £360 from a £20 bet on an 18 to 1 outsider that no one thought should win the race. My prediction for race four, the 245 at Wolverhampton, was a horse called Formation. Race four, I was out in a bar with my friends. Oh my God, he's going to win again, I'm telling you. I've got so much confidence. I was still in disbelief on who this person is, this anonymous person is, who's this system, what is the system. Formation will put favourite backers on good terms, and so too Jamie Spencer, who once again moves two ahead of seven. Yeah! The chance of four wins in a row being predicted at random are already over a thousand to one, but the system guarantees a win. Kadisha's now won four times in a row and gained nearly £500 in cash. I've managed to convince her the system works and that something extraordinary is happening. I did feel good winning loads of money all the time. Part of what makes the system seem so impossible is that it defies our understanding of probability and influence over future events. And I'm going to show you something now which is impossible in exactly the same way. And that is to toss a coin fairly ten times in a row and have it come up heads every time. Now we film this under control conditions with multiple cameras that won't cut away and it's a genuine coin with heads on one side and tails on the other but I want you to watch this and try and work out how it can be possible because the key to understanding this is the key to understanding the system. <clears throat> Ten heads in a row. Watch. One. That's heads. Two, that's heads. Three, heads.
heads, that is four. Heads, five. Six. Four more to go, and I'll stop. Seven. Three more. Eight. Nine heads. Last one. Ten. Ten heads in a row. Thank you very much indeed. I'll show you later on exactly how that's possible, but for now I need to take what I'm doing with the coin and apply that to the horse races so that I can predict again and again the results of the races and convince Kadisha that my system really works. Now I'm not the first person to try and come up with a horse racing system. It's been attempted in the past, but it has never ever worked. My system, though, is the first system that guarantees a win over and over again. And later on, I'm going to show you how. It wouldn't be easy for, for a, a panther to make a living out of horse racing. Two greys, classic crocker on the outside of Corellian as they go towards the third. There can't be a system. You're dealing with an animal. It's not a machine. You can't set it. If he comes out of the stable the wrong side in the morning, he might not be winning his race. Nation State jumped it better over the creek behind them with predicament and swiftly on defence number five. Well, if somebody said to me they had a system, it's rubbish. Yeah. Really, there's only one winner and the bookmaker's the winner. If there was a winning system, that everyone, there would be no bookmakers. When we come to work, we come out with a load of cigars when we work, because we know at the end of the day we're going to celebrate with a nice cigar on the way home, so all you punters are going to lose all your money. That's what we come here with. Just a bit keen to go a bit faster, they gray. To find a system that will change your life is what we're talking about. That is definitely improbable. And even if you think you've found it, having the guts to back that, to back that up and having putting down large sums of money to make it change your life is, is another step forward altogether. Imperial Commander over it in front from Nation State in second place. Blundering back in third was Karenin, but he's a tired horse now. Imperial Commander, the odds-on favourite, comes up the hill, storms up the hill towards the final fence here. And he comes towards it, jumps it well. Tony Evans, the Imperial Commander, uh, ten mates clear of a Nation State in second place. There's a decent battle of the third over the creek, maybe the one for that. But Imperial Commander, having won here last month, makes it two out of two. Another winner here at Cheltenham. After four wins in a row, it's time for Kadisha to experience the excitement of a live horse race. And while she gets ready for that, I wanted to convince the experts, against their instincts, that maybe it is possible for a system to really exist. I arranged to meet some racing experts to test out some of my ideas and hopefully convince them that I could, indeed, have a reliable system. Phil Bell is the manager of Fontwell Park Racecourse. Katie Stevens is the manager of Hereford Racecourse. James Pyman is a journalist and tipster for the Racing Post. Jim Boyle is a racehorse trainer and a council member of the National Trainers Federation. Can I get you to mix up those four envelopes for me? Just give them a mix. And if you can stick these on yourselves, they peel off and you can put the backings uh, in your pocket if you like. Thank you very much. Just put one of those on you each. And if you grab one of those as well, thank you. Have, a, have an envelope too. You've all been interviewed about uh, this idea of there being a system and uh, whether it's possible to predict the horses accurately uh, and predictably evil sort of said no it's not it, it's not possible I would say that it's massively unlikely but by no means impossible to have a system that would work a, a mathematician worked out the probability of, of having a system that would accurately predict a winning horse every time is uh, it's 1.48 billion to one hugely unlikely as good as impossible but not impossible that's the point actually just massively improbable. So what I'm going to do um, 
is to ask you to sort of step into this world of, of people here. There are 500 Polaroid pictures, and these are just members of the public. And I'm going to ask you to each go and select one of these pictures. It's just really important as you do this um, that it is a random selection. So please don't let what the people look like, you know, how attractive or unattractive they are. Don't let any of that influence you. Some of the, you know, if any of the names happen to remind you of people that you know, again, none of that is to influence you at all. These have to be random selections. That's very important at this point. What I would say is, by doing this, I am showing you how my system works. It'll make more sense to you when you watch the program back, then that'll, you'll understand what I mean. Please have a good look around at them all. You'll see they're all different. Take as long as you like. When you've got one, just stand by it and let me know that you've, uh, chosen one, but take as long as you like, if we'd have a good wander around first. The pictures themselves have long numbers on the back, but don't worry about those for now. Those will be uh, important later on. Take your time. Just put your hand up when you've chosen one and, okay, great, lovely. All got one? Yeah. Excellent, thank you very much indeed. Unclip the pictures, uh, just take them off the, off the string. There's a couple of little pegs on each one. Lovely. So bringing your picture with you, what I want you to do, not quite yet, when I tell you to, is to come and stand on one of these four black spots that there are here on the, uh, on the ground. So if you come and do that for me now, any one of these four. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. So there are 500 pictures there. You've each got one. You've come back and stood on one of these spots each, thus putting yourself in a, um, in a different order um, and uh, chosen large... I mean, it is by chance. It is random, apart from the fact that whoever would have... Probably whoever was closest, whoever took a picture from closest, would have had the choice of any one of the four to stand on. Probably the, who was last to come in? I was last. Yeah, so you, you didn't have any choice at all. The order you put yourself, if you look at your stickers, is one, three, four, two. Yes? And you're happy that that is... If you can just hold on to that for a second for me. You're happy that that is a randomly, seemingly unpredictable order that you would, that you would come and stand in. Yes? Okay. That. Just open up the, the red envelope that you saw it was hanging there all along and just read out what it says in there. The order you will stand in will be 1342. 1342. Turn it around, show the camera. 1342, the order that you've, that you've ended up standing in. Excellent. Thank you very much. Congratulations. A seemingly impossible thing to predict, but the point is, it's not impossible. It's, not, it's, it's highly improbable, but not impossible. All right? Now, you're all odds experts, so what are the odds of me predicting, knowing in advance which order you were going to stand in? One of you has a choice of four. The next person has a choice of three, the next one two, the next one one. The answer is four times three times two times one, which is uh, 24. One in 24. That's the improbable odds of me knowing in advance which order you were going to come and stand in, all right? Not impossible, just highly improbable. Okay. Next, uh, if you just take the pictures and just, if you turn them around and show the cameras just so we can see uh, who all these people are. Let's get the names as well. Jenny Pringle. Jenny Pringle, thank you. You can just show the camera. Peter Burgess. Peter Burgess. Carl Smith. Carl Smith. Jane Baker. Jane Baker. Excellent. Okay. So, sorry. So, Jenny Pringle, your, your full name is? James Pyman. Pyman. So, your initials are JP. JP, yeah. And the initials of this woman are also? JP. Are also JP. Your name is? Phil Bell. Phil Bell. And show us? Peter Burgess. Same initials. PB. Yes. Your initials, do they match? KS. Katie Kate Stevens. Katie Stevens. And what's that, Carl Smith? And your full name is Jim? Boyle. Jim Boyle, JB, all right? So your initials match the initials of the photographs that you picked. And please have a look around. None of the other initials match any of your names, all right? Seemingly impossible for this to happen. But it's not impossible, it's just highly improbable, yeah? What are the chances of that happening? There are 500 pictures, so the first person to take one has a choice of 500. The next person doesn't quite. The next person only has a choice of 499 because one of them's just been taken. And the next person has a choice of 498. And the next one, 497. So that number, 500 times 499 times 498 times 497, gives you the probability of you picking the Polaroids, the only Polaroids that have the same initials that match yours. And the, who mixed the envelopes at the beginning? That was you. So you mixed the envelopes, uh, you handed them out, you each took one. If you open them up, take out what's inside. In fact, wait, you do yours first for me, just so we can get this on camera. Can you open yours up? 
Recognise the picture? Yeah. It's a picture that matches the Polaroid that you took. That is Jenny, was it Jenny Pringle? Jenny Pringle. Jenny yeah. Pringle. Do you want to take yours out as well, Phil? Hopefully that matches the one that you've just picked. And Katie? Excellent. Are you? And you'll do the same for me, Jim? Is it the same? Can you just hold them up with the pictures as well? Just fantastic. You pick the ones that match the envelopes that you mixed and took at the beginning. Again, the chances of that, impossible. Seemingly impossible. <laughs> but the same odds. It's 500 times 409 times 408 times 497. Which means, if you just keep hold of your Polaroids, but just drop everything else on the floor, just by the, the spots around it. Just keep hold of the little Polaroids. The chances, what are the chances of all of that happening? The chances of me knowing where you were going to stand, which pictures you were going to take, the uh, initials matching up and matching what you picked at the random envelopes at the beginning. If you come forward for me, if you come back where you were, if you put yourselves back into one, two, three, four order, so one, two, three, four, and I'm going to give you a, uh, let me just give you a, a uh, calculator there. The chances of all that happening is, it's 24 times this here. So if you do, I'll do 500 times 499 times 498 times 497. Anybody watching this at home with a computer or a big calculator might want to do this. Work out what that is for me and then multiply that by 24. The answer I can tell you is 1482065. Doing this? 928000. Is that the correct number? That's the correct number. That's the odds of all of those things happening. Not impossible, just massively improbable. One last thing. If you just hold the faces together so the camera can see. Just hold the Polaroids up. And just bring them together a little bit. Excellent. I did say there were numbers on the back, not to pay any attention to them yet. All right, now I'm going to turn these around. Have a look at them on the back before I turn them around. 1482 065 928 Zero, zero, zero. You pick the Polaroids that had the numbers on the back that make up the odds of all of that having happened. And that odd is 1.48 billion is the same odds as this system existing in the first place that allows me to break the horses every time. Not impossible, just massively improbable. Thank you very much. Something for you to think about. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks for taking part. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Katie, much. Thank you very much indeed. Excellent. I shall leave you with those numbers. Cheers. Mesmerised. I can't believe what I've seen, really. I'm absolutely flabbergasted. I was, I was trying to t turn the numbers over in my head and work out, as Darren was going along, what the probability was. I quickly got lost and the number just got bigger and bigger and bigger. It, it, you know, it's, it's just astonishing, I think. Uh, if he wants to come and work for the racing post, then I'm sure there'll be a job offer for him. I mean, I think if, if horses are as predictable as, as humans, then Darren's on to an absolute winner. My opinion has changed. I thought, I thought it was pretty much impossible. And I'm now curious to know what he's come up with. I said initially that it depends what side of the stable the horse comes out in the morning, but I think Darren would probably know. <laughs> <laughs> so by this point, Kadisha had received four winning predictions from me. Now it was time for her to experience the thrill of a real race course for race number five. For race five, we now go to Newbury for a high profile and well attended event. Some 11,000 people are watching it from the stands, on top of the millions watching it on TV at home. The name of the winning horse has already been given to Kadisha 24 hours beforehand. There's no way that I or anyone else should be able to predict the outcome. Con today to Newbury at the races. I've never been to a race course before. This is very much the first time for me. Today I need to put down 150 pounds, which is like breathtaking, and this is going to be on Lively Joe, Joe Lively. So very exciting, very nervous, and he just better win. So here he is from my racing cards, Newbury, Joe Lively, 11 to 2. Kadisha still has no idea that the amazing winning predictions have been coming from me. The day before race 5, the 205 at Newbury, I sent her my prediction for a horse called Joe Lively. It's an outsider at 11 to 2, but Kadisha is risking the biggest bet she's made so far with £150 of her own money. What she doesn't know is that I'm also here, and after the race she'll be meeting me for the first time. They're off. The yellow jacket of Joe Lively is on the outside of them. Joe Lively running a little bit free towards now. the outside for Joe Tizard in the yellow and red jacket is just over a length behind the leader. Almost now the first three quarters of a mile as they come again left-handed and into the straight for the first time and head down towards fence number four, which come is in on. the lane fence. Vada Royal. Come on, 
Joe. So this is the water jump. Oh, and he's... Oh, my oh. God! He dropped like a donkey. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Oh, my God! This is what I mean. How can there possibly be a system? How can you possibly know? Last on the far side, Nevada Royal, and Manila Tipperary has gone oh there. Oh, my Manila God! Tipperary, knuckled on landing, shot Tom O'Brien. That's not a knock, it's going to win. It's in third place. Manila Tipperary at the last in the back. Third straight. place, the Five rain started, the wind's getting stronger. How can it possibly catch up? It's not going to win. Finally in third place, they've got one fence to jump now. It's only a very narrow lead. Here's John, he's almost level with him now as they come towards the last. And he's down to oh! the final one. And he's almost, he has, he's got, almost got down. Oh! And there, Joe is Johnny. And so, oh! Joe Lively, who was third at the last and looking beat, is going to be a very fortunate winner of this Marshalls Peugeot 308 Novices oh chase. Oh my God! Joe Lively oh then. Oh my God! The first one of them who was brought under pressure has eventually ended up taking the race as here's Johnny, the only other one who's Show going to get round this time that we need to Oh my God, I don't understand that! It was in third place all the way! Can you believe it? That's not bad beginner's luck. Can you believe that? 852, 975. <laughs> so after the fifth race and I won again just under a grand and I'm over the moon jumping for joy that I'm in the, you know Newbury at a race course seeing the horses live, I get taken to meet the person that's been doing this whole thing, the anonymous person, you know, that's been doing this system. Hi, Kadisha. <laughs> Hello. Hello, I'm Darren. And then I met Darren Brown. And honestly, I was scared. Okay, now I'm scared. So I was confused, thinking, oh my God, all this time, you know, gutted. I didn't put on more money if I knew it was him, you know, it's so like I'd have retired by now. So I've developed a system. This is a foolproof, 100% system of winning at the races. And you've seen that it works. And you've seen that it works all the time, even this afternoon when it just looked like there was no way that it could. It did look like that, actually. Now, so far, you have made some money. You've been putting 20 quid, 50 quid, and then you put 150 quid on today. Yeah. But this is small amounts compared to what I want you to do next, all right? You've won five races in a row. Yeah. I'm going to give you the name of the sixth winner, yeah. all right? And then that'll be it. Oh, my God. So I want you to put a lot of money on it, all right? Because I want this show to finish with you winning a huge sum of money, all right? So we're talking several thousand pounds if you can get that together. I know the minute I say that, you're going to think, oh, where am I going to get that money from? What happens if I lose? You will not lose <laughs> because the system never fails. Okay. All right, I just want to finish with you winning a massive amount that's going to change your life. So okay. it's so exciting. Also, if you do do this and if you commit to it, as I hope you will, I will also tell you, I will explain to you how the system works. All right, so even though it's the last name that I'll give you, if you want to use the system yourself, you are welcome to. You may choose not to, it's a lot of work to make it work, but I will tell you, I will teach you exactly how it works. So you'll have that too. Okay. At the moment, it's only me that knows exactly how it works. You'll be the other person. No problem. Oh, I don't know, this is crazy, this is crazy. And it's like, how can you know a system for this? How can you? So now I'm gonna tell you how the system works. How can Kadisha be receiving correct predictions for each race? Bear in mind the predictions are made well in advance and the races are quite genuine. How does it work? Well, it all starts with this. That is a homeopathic remedy. It's called astragalus. Uh, you take it for viral infections, but you could substitute that for anything you might take for diabetes or insomnia, or indeed it could be a healing crystal or anything that uh, represents an alternative therapy of your choice. But you might have a viral infection. You might take astragalus. You might then feel better and decide, therefore, it must be an effective cure. The point is, it works for you. What more proof could you need? The trouble is, that when these things are tested properly over thousands of people, they are shown to really have no effect whatsoever. The trap that people fall into is to think, all the evidence I need is what I know in my head and I feel in my heart and what I just know to be true. But that isn't really evidence for it being true, that's just a statement about how much you believe it and also how limiting your own perspective can be. Now, Kadisha believes in this system, she's convinced by it, because she's only looking at it from her own perspective. And at home, if you haven't worked out how the system works yet either, it's because you are also only seeing it from Kadisha's point of view. 
Now it's time to force a change in perspective and to look at the bigger picture. And let's begin with that coin again. Ten heads in a row. Watch. To predict a run of ten heads in a row and then make it happen is hugely unlikely. The chance of it happening is about one in a thousand. However, if you flip a coin thousands of times and record the results, somewhere along that line of heads and tails, a line of ten heads is actually very likely to appear. OK, ten heads in a row. That's one. To work out the system, you need to understand that we can only know what comes from our own limited experience. And our experience can often be very far from the truth. I can't see the bowl anymore. Here we go. Ten. <laughs> what you saw was the final minute of what was an excruciatingly long day. We filmed for over nine hours until eventually a clear run of heads appeared. Nine heads. Last one. The impossible became inevitable. Ten. Ten heads in a row. Thank you very much indeed. You now have all the clues needed to work out for yourself how the system operates. I shall fully explain it in a few minutes. I want you to ask yourself, if you haven't already, can there really be a system? Should she be doing this? Is this an amazing opportunity for Kadisha? Or if she takes it, is it a terrible mistake? I'm going to my dad's because I'm going to go and get some cash to put down on the final race. My personal situation is I'm broke. <laughs> so to find as much money as you can is like insanity to put down on a horse. If I won loads of money, I would. I'd give my dad lots and like take me and my brothers and my son and my nephew on holiday. We are here at my daddy's house. And I'm so, so scared now. I'm really, really scared now. This is my wonderful father. <laughs> <laughs> and he's yes. going to be giving me a thousand pounds today to put on on the final race. When I told my dad um, about everything, he was just freaked out. He was really, really freaked out. He was worried, thinking, oh my God, am I going to be doing what he's doing, like gambling and betting all my wages away? First started off on winning like 20 pounds and 30 pounds, and then it went up to 360 pounds wow. and keeps increasing. I'm trying to get that every Saturday. <laughs> the most I've ever put on a horse is 20 pounds and I double and that lost. And when I lost, I says, that's it, never, ever again. And he was just like shocked, you know, he didn't really believe that this was a, to do with a TV programme. <laughs> Thank you. Thousand pound from my dad. That's a lot of money for us. <gasps> Got the money from my dad. Thousand pounds. Feeling very nervous, but I'm ready to roll. Come on, baby. Because of her faith in my system, Kadisha has borrowed from her father and since then has also been to a loan company for more money. She's now come to Sandown Racecourse, prepared to gamble money she can't afford to lose. Once her bet is placed, I'm going to explain to her and to you how this incredible system really works. It's been raining steadily here for the last couple of days. The going is very heavy, the ground's heavy. The favourite's likely to be Moon over Miami, one last time out at, at uh, Cheltenham. Mahogany Blaze next in, Paddy Brennan riding this horse for Nigel Twiston Davis. The next one that, that I quite like is a horse called Pancake. Goes well on testing ground, likes the mud. Maradima, trained by Paul Nichols, top trainer. Any one of those four could win it. When we last spoke to you, I told you you'd have to get quite a lot of money together yes. uh, for today's race. Yes. And I understand you've done that. Yes, I have. How much money have you, have you got for this bet? £4,000. £4,000. £4,000. £4, which pounds. is One, a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Can you tell me how you got that? I know, yeah. you've, I know you ended up getting some from a, um, a loan company. but Yeah, and my dad as well. I got some from my dad. So that's what makes it more scary for me. Because I got some of my dad's money. And did you tell your dad exactly what it was for? Yes, and that's what made it even worse. So your tip for today is horse number two. Okay. Moon over Miami. 
So watch out for the green and white shirt. I'm going to go and push a bet for you because I don't want you seeing yet exactly how much you're going to win and everything. So okay. have you got a big envelope of cash on you somewhere? I have. I haven't got an envelope. I've got loads of cash. Excellent. <laughs> That's a lot of money. <laughs> that is £4,000. Um, all right. Okay. You definitely right to do this? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. I trust right. the sister and you. I'll go do it before the queue gets too long. I'll see in a bit. I'm really crapping it. Have I lost the plot? Am I really here? Is this really going on? Taking a thousand pounds from my dad makes me feel very overwhelmed and more anxious. That's it. That's your, <laughs> that's your four thousand pounds. This is worth a lot of money. Please don't drop it or lose it. You're right. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Do you want to know how it's done? Yeah. Yeah? So a couple of months ago we got in touch with you. Yeah. Remember? And we gave you that first tip. Yeah. You weren't the only person that we contacted. It was actually a very large group of people. It was almost 8,000 people. My name is Christina Buckins, I'm 27. My name is I'm 23 years old. Yeah, I'm Lewis. My name's Sarah, I'm 28 years old. The system works because Kadisha is not alone. When we contacted Kadisha, we also contacted a huge number of other people and gave them different tips. The system begins with 7,776 people. The people we contacted are then randomly divided into six equal groups. A six-horse race is then chosen, in our case it was the 920 at Wolverhampton, and each group of people is allocated the name of a different horse as the winner. Group 1 is given the name of Horse 1, Group 2 is given the name of Horse 2, Group 3, Horse 3, and so on. Kadisha happens to be in the group which is given the horse named Boz. The race runs, and of course only one horse can win, in our case it is Boz. Apologies are then sent to the five groups of people whose horses do not win, blaming a glitch in the system, and they disappear from the process. Kadisha happens to be one of those people in the successful group which has had a winning horse. Now for race two, this group is again split randomly into another six equal groups. So today's Sunday, I'm waiting for my latest tip. Well, I'm en route to the bookies now, so this will be my second bet. Just found out, uh, we've got the next bet through. It's going to be the first time I've ever been in a bookies in my life, and it's going to be the only the second time I've ever actually put a bet on. I'm in the bookmakers, just at the moment seeing um, which horses are running and where they're running from. Placing my second bet now with the system, very confident. Again, Kadisha happens to be in the winning group and the other five groups with losing horses are eliminated from the process. Exactly the same happens again for race three. The winning group from the previous race is split into six equal groups. Race three is the 220 at Carlisle, and Norton Brook wins, giving us just 36 people, including Kadisha, who have had three consecutive winners in a row. In race four, those 36 are divided into six groups of six, and each is given the name of a horse in another six-horse race. In our case, the race is the 345 at Newbury, and Formation wins, reducing the number of people from 36 to just our winning six people, one of whom happens to be Kadisha. Say, so I do it again and again and again, and each time this group is narrowing and narrowing and narrowing, and you're just happening to be in the winning group each time as it goes through. Now, this continues to last week. You were not the only person there being filmed, thinking they were taking part in this show. We kept you all apart. You're all being filmed. You all think you're the only person being filmed for this show. It's 92, and it's near the Tipperary. Well, I've just put on 150 quid of my own money on Here's Johnny. The horse I betted on is called Nevada Royale. None of you can understand how you've had these winning names all the way through, but we didn't know which one of you would win. Last on the far side, Nevada Royale, and Milena Tipperary is on gone there. The ride has just fallen off, so I guess that would be a lost bit. Here's Johnny's almost level with him now as they come towards the last, and he's down Nevada Royale, and he's almost, he has, he's brought the almost brought down. No! I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It didn't work. You win some, you lose some. Oh, my horse didn't win. It's a pyramid which begins with 7,776 people who are all sent anonymous tips. 
all but one of them are eliminated as the system fails for them and we're left with just one single random winner who has had five consecutive wins. So last week at Newbury, you were that last person, the final person who just happened to have those winning names all the way through. That was last week. This week, it is just you and me and those five horses. <laughs> and there is no way of knowing which horse is going to win. Four grand. Four grand. Oh my god! What's going, what's going through your head before we go? Fucking into... hell, that's what's going through my head. <laughs> fucking hell. Oh my god. Fucking hell. Let's go. We've got to get through. The race, race is about to start. Oh my god, I can't believe you've done that! Oh. oh, this way, this way, this way. <laughs> so now you know, the system is not a horse racing system, it's a belief system. Now my heart is racing. An elaborate process designed to convince one person that she will win, impossibly, again and again. Oh my god. A system so powerful that Kadisha has put up money she cannot afford on a race that cannot be predicted. Oh no! But if it doesn't win... I will faint here, and then I'll cry until I die. It's, oh, I don't know, I feel sick, I feel faint. Remember, it's moon over Miami in the green and white checks. They're off. There they go. Maradima from Pancakes. Oh, there they go. Blaze back in third, moon over Miami in green and white jacket, probably a little bit behind them. Heading down the side of the course, downhill, Maradima. Five or six lengths to moon over Miami. It's raining, it can slip. Oh, my stomach. Unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. Moon over Miami, who's about seven lengths off the leader now as they clear the next lap. Four grand is at the back. Moon over Miami in fourth place at the moment. The other joint favourite with the leader as they head towards the water jump halfway down the back straight. It's not doing well, is it, the moment? No. Jumped in well. He's like right at back, and they've got a all slip. Or, oh my god! Moon over Miami on the right there, the green and white jacket. It is Maradima who's made all the running so far and tackled in second by Mahogany Blaze on the right. Back in third, the big white face of Bull Pancake and Moon over Miami now coming under a bit of pressure in fourth place. Oh my god! But it's lost, I don't understand. It should be third. Moon over Miami is very disappointing, looks beat as they run round the final turn. with a fluent display of jumping wins the Henry VIII Novices chase from Mahogany Blaze in second Pancake back in third then Moon over Miami He didn't win, that's four grand gone How can I not win and I won five times already? This is Maradima one, number three Why am I still holding on to a ticket that I have not even won? <laughs> I could cry now, I could cry but it's only because you're bloody recording why I won't but I could because it's like £4,000 I can't believe I've lost four grand. I, I've been lucky all this time and now it's all gone wrong. I came here broke and now I'm even more broke. My dad's gonna kill me. I know how hard it was for you to get hold of that money. Believe it. Do you really think that I would just gamble? No, this is why I can't believe you've done that. 
Have you got the slip? So I told you Moon Over Miami would win. Yes, and it lost. When I walked off to the office to place the bet, when I left you when I went off to place the bet, I thought to myself, Moon Over Miami isn't going to win this race. And if you look at what I actually placed the bet on, that's 4,000 to win on Maradima. On Maradima. <laughs> which means... Here I go. <laughs> It's 13 grand that you've just won. <laughs> oh, my dad's going to love you. That's not right, doing that. Come on, let's go get your cash before the next race. <laughs> oh, my God! I did hate him a minute ago. I did. I hated you. I was like, oh, my God. I don't know what to do, I don't know, I don't know. It's fantastic, because I'm debt free. I'm debt free for the first time in gone 30 years.